Today, Lesson 1, uh, 12, we're going to be solving systems of quadratic and linear equations. So, um, systems of equations are equations that involve the same variables. Two equations that have the same variables, we can find a common solution to those two equations if one exists. So we've already done this with linear equations. We use three techniques for linear equation. We use graphing, finding the point of intersection. We used uh, substitution, where you solve one variable for one value, substitute it into the other one, and then we used elimination. All of those methods can also be used for these, okay? Uh, we're going to do focus on two techniques today. Um, we're going to focus on graphing, and we're going to focus on uh, substitution. So that's the two kind of methods that we'll look at with these systems of quadratic and linear equations. Now, First of all, let's, let's get some important concepts here. The solution to a system of equations is the point of intersection or points of intersection. Should be, maybe the S should be with point there. It's the point or points of intersection of their graphs. Okay, so graphically speaking, where two lines intersect, that's the common solution to the two lines. Where a parabola and a line intersect, that would be the common solution or solutions to the line. So we're looking for points as solutions and not, and not numbers. So don't short, don't <laughs> don't fall short, <laughs> or the other thing I just said. <laughs> don't fall short. Abuse. You're not reporting that, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, we fall short when we stop, like if we're solving a quadratic equation and we factor it and we don't use the factors to find the answers, that's falling short of doing it. So we fall short if we find an x value, for example, x equals 6, and we don't go back and find the y value that goes with it. Okay, so don't fall short of getting the correct answer. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, so we're looking for points as solutions and not numbers. Uh, we can also have no solutions or multiple solutions depending on what the graphs look like. Okay, so let's look at some graphs, just kind of some graphical examples. These are in your textbook if you wanted to look there. But um, here's an example of two lines, right? You see the blue line and the black line? The point of intersection there. Uh, looks like x is 2 and y is maybe 6, yeah. 2 and 6. Graphically, we could see that the point 2, 6 is the intersection, and you can substitute those values into these equations, and you can put 6 in for y and 2 in for x, and it, that works for that one. And if we put 6 in for y and 2 in for x here, we get 4, I can't write there, uh, 4 times 2, 14 minus 4 times 2 is, is indeed 6. So graphically, you have to be careful because, you know, what if that was uh, 2 and uh, 6.01? You know, it could be something really close to 6. You need to check your answers, particularly when you find them graphically. So two lines intersect in one point, but you can see in this, per, in this picture that a parabola and a line could very well easily intersect in two points, right? So a, a U-shape, our parabola shape, and a line can have two intersection points. Could it have more than two? If a parabola went sideways, you would still only be able to touch it twice with a line, right? So... Oh, no, you could have two ways. You what? Okay, now George is talking about a different scenario right here. If we had two parabolas then we could have a lots of solutions or lots of possibilities open up, right? If you had a parabola that opened up and one that opened down, then we could have um, two solutions there, right? But you could also have <coughs> a parabola that opened up, and somebody just described a scenario where you have a parabola that opens sideways, and we have how many solutions there? Four solutions, right? So, <clears throat> and you'll do this in Algebra 2 when you deal with conic sections, a circle and an ellipse, for example. You know, you could have a circle 
and an ellipse. You don't need to be writing a lot of this stuff down, bud. You could have a circle and an ellipse that have four intersection points. Okay, you could talk about planetary, planetary orbits, which are elliptical, you know, um, colliding. There's actually two planets. I can't remember which two. Um, whose orbits overlap each other. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's Pluto and Neptune? Yeah. So, you know, is there a possibility that they could collide someday? You know? I think they're probably on different planes, but the actual, the, uh, the equations of their orbits do have common solution points. So, you know, these types of things could, uh, you know, there's applications to all of this stuff in science and technology stuff. So, um, <clears throat> We could also have a parabola and a line that just touch in one point. Does anybody know what that might be called? Jackson? It's a point of tangency if it's drawn like this. Okay? So I could also draw a line that looked like this, right? That's only going to have one intersection point. But that's not a point of tangency anymore. So a point of tangency, a tangent point, is it means that the line touches the, the graph in one point only and has the same characteristics of the function at that point. So at that point, the line and the parabola are, are behaving exactly the same. They have the same slope. They're heading in the same direction. They're just, for, for a brief moment in, in uh, space there, they're exactly the same. Okay, but uh, another, you know, you, if you had a line that did this, I mean, that line is only going to touch, well, that would touch it again, actually. You would need a vertical line to guarantee that it didn't touch it again. But if you had a vertical line here, uh, that has one point of intersection, and it's not a tangent point. Okay, so you got to be careful how you define tangency, but Jackson's correct. In that picture, that is a tangent line. And we also have the scenario where you could have a line and a parabola that do not intersect, Right? Just like two parallel lines won't intersect, there's no common solution for two parallel lines. Uh, in this case, yeah, parallel line dance. In this case, <laughs> in this case, we have a parallel. Oh, it's not a parallel scenario, but we have a parabola and a line that will never intersect. So we can have no solutions. So those are the scenarios that we're going to kind of uh, investigate today. We're going to investigate it graphically, and we're going to investigate it uh, algebraically. Did you find the calculator? Okay. All right, so, ready? Let's go. Example number one. Now, we're going to solve these graphically, and we're just going to jump straight to the graphing calculator uh, for our solutions. But can, can you think of, can anybody recognize or guess what the two solutions might be here? Jackson? Well... You're falling short. Because the intersection points have to be what? They have to be points, right? So 2 and negative 2 would be the uh, x values of the points. But you would have to go back and find the y value for the points. But that's a little easy in this problem. What's the y value for the point have to be for these to have common solutions? 4. So 2, 4, and negative 2, 4 are going to be the two intersection points. Now, to do this graphically, all right, to do this graphically, you get your graphing calculators. Uh, that's y1, that's y2. Yep. So you make those substitutions. Jay, find somebody you can look on with. Maybe slide back there and share with George. Well, I, just, I trust you with my son, George. You should be honored. I do. I, I tell him every day at home at some point in time, Jay, why can't you just be more like George? Okay, so, so you're telling me you trust George Taylor with your son to be in a pair with Jay. Why are you talking about yourself yeah. All right, here we go. All right, so you ready, guys? Y1 equals X squared, Y2 equals 4. Uh, your graph is going to look like this. So you've got your parabola, Y equals X squared. You've got your line y equals 4. And this point of intersection, that point of intersection is what we're interested in finding. Okay? So we're going to use our actual menus, second, and then the trace key, 
That takes us into our calculate menu. Second trace, that's going to take us to, in, uh, is it five that's intersection? Yes. So second trace, option five, and then that's going to take you to the graph. Now, there's two intersection points to find, so we have to go through this process twice. So the first step you're going to do is use your arrow keys to go over close to one of the intersection points, and then you're going to hit enter, enter, enter. When you get close to that intersection point, hit enter, enter, enter. Okay? Yeah, you had one, you had already hit enter once. So it tells you that the intersection point on the left is negative 2, 4, right? And the intersection point on the right is positive 2, 4. Yeah. You're not using the menu, you're tracing. Okay. Right, so you got to hit enter, and it tells you it's 2, 4. <clears throat> okay? So you want to do that. You left your purse. I don't have purse. All right. So that, this one's pretty easy, right? Is everybody good? You figured out the syntax of what to do with the calculator. Uh, same thing with this one. Y equals X squared and Y equals negative 4X minus 4. We want to find our intersection points. Find the intersection points. Part B, yeah. So let uh, let y equal that's y one and that's y two. So you're going to graph those. Now, from time to time, I, I think these are going to be pretty familiar. Pretty. Uh, uh, Ooh, it's one of those yeah. you drew. So this graph is interesting, right? What's interesting about this graph? Yeah, y equals x squared is a parabola. They intersect more than one point. They do, I think. What do you have to do to see it? What do you have to do to see it? Oh, move over the arrow, the intersecting. All right, so the y equals x squared looks like this. Do they intersect more than once? Y equals 4x, negative 4x minus 4. It's going to look something like this, right? So, if you want to see the point of intersection, does it intersect more than once? That's not how it is. That's not how it is. It like falls along the entire line. No, it doesn't. It barely goes off it. It only intersects once. All right, how can we see that point of intersection, see if it's only one point or two? How can we see? Uh... You could go to table if your table settings would allow you to see where they're equal. Okay, how could you see it? So y'all think it only intersects once, like somewhere like right in there? No, no, no. I think it intersects more than once. I got negative. Go like where? Nine, 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 Using your cursor, I want you to move over to that area or actually zoom in feature. Use the zoom feature. Just use zoom. And just use zoom in. Option two. And move the cursor close to where they intersect. Okay? And then hit enter. What that does is zoom it. So don't, don't go into your window. Just actually use the zoom key. Do zoom. And just zoom in. Right, and move over close to where they intersect using this uh, somewhere right in there and just hit enter. What the, moving the cursor does is centers your talking. You're going to have to stop talking while we're doing the calculator stuff. Okay? So zoom in. Yeah, you're close to it. Close enough there, Buster. Hit enter. Just once. Ooh. So you're doing box, huh? We don't want to do box. We want to do zoom in. Okay. Okay. So once you zoom in, you can kind of get an idea as to whether the line touches it more than once or not. You can continue zooming into that point of intersection, and it indeed looks like there's only one point of intersection, right? So do second trace. Second trace five. Enter, 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 close to the intersection point. I broke it. <laughs> All right, what's the, what is the point of intersection? 
Negative 1.99999. Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. So you guys are telling me that the solution, the calculator is telling you the solution is what? Negative 1.99. That's, that's negative 2. And the x value, the y value is? 4. Is 4. It tells you 3.999 or what. Anytime the calculator does that, the algorithm that it's taking you through to get the answer is, they're, they're, you know, they're, that's an approximate value. We're going to round it. Now we're going to always check the answer algebraically. Is 4 equal to negative 2 squared? Yes. Yes. Okay. And Jackson, what you said just a second ago, we could look at it uh, algebraically to see if it has more than one solution or not. But you, you have to zoom into things in order to get them to um, – if you press enter while the calculator is graphing, it pauses it. Um, was so, it paused? Yeah, there was a little line running up there on oh, the top. I thought it was like trying I mean, to it's paused. Okay, all right, so let's do another one. Y'all ready? Now, what's an obvious intersection point here? Zero and negative nine. Um, they both have similar y-intercept points. But this one, I think we're going to have to kind of work hard to find a second solution, if there is a second solution. Y equals uh, 2x squared minus 9 is going to be something like this. Y equals 4x minus 9. It's going to have the same y-intercept and a steep slope. So we may have to actually zoom out to see that second intersection point. When you graph it in a zoom 6, if you graph a normal viewing screen, you can see both solutions, can't you? So there's one of your intersection points. Use your graphing calculator to find both the intersection points. Second trace, five, move to the solution and hit enter, enter, enter. So it looks like our second solution is going to be the x-intercept. There's somewhere close to the x-intercept. Okay, what did we find for our two solutions? Zero, negative nine, and two, negative one. Okay. Okay. Do y'all have any issues using your graphing calculator to do that? Now, this is an interesting thing that you can do that we haven't talked a whole lot about this year. You can use your graphing calculator to solve anything. Even things that you don't understand, you could use your graphing calculator to solve it. Um, we could look at, um, just for example, let's throw another one up here. Let's go back to the last unit. If we had this quadratic, not quadratic, Yeah. How could you solve this graphically? Jackson? Find the roots of the function the square root of two x minus one minus x minus one. Graph the square root of two x minus one. There you go. Minus x minus one. Graph this one. Graph this one. I don't think that's what you're saying, but you're onto something, right? If we want to know where those two things are equal, we could look at the graph of each side and see where they intersect, right? So you could put this in your calculator, y equals square root of 2x minus 1 and y equals x plus 1. There's no solution. Is that what you're saying? Okay. So we would need to, we would need to do something like maybe x minus 4 to get a solution. That would have a solution. Okay. But you could solve this uh, graphically by taking the left side of your equation and setting it equal to the right side of your equation. All right? Solve it graphically. Okay, let's look at uh, this. Now, this we're going to solve algebraically. You can put your calculators to the side. Um, 
Okay, so some of your instructions are going to say to solve graphically. Um, algebraically is kind of the way we'll, we'll major on, but to solve algebraically, we're going to use primarily substitution as a technique. Okay, now we already, and this is going to be the case most of the time, you're going to be given these, the two equations in uh, standard form or slope intercept form for your linear equation. So how would we solve this algebraically? No. We're ready to solve by substitution, aren't we? Can't we take this value for y and substitute it right there? Or we could take this value for y and substitute it right there. And that would give us x squared plus 5x minus 1 equals 5x plus 3. We're making a substitution. And now we have a quadratic equation that looks very much like the equations that we solved on our last test, right? The first thing we need to do is set this equal to 0. And then we're either going to, 9 times out of 10, we're going to solve by factoring or we're going to solve by using the quadratic formula, right? That's the two techniques we'll use the most. Hopefully this will factor. If we subtract 5x from both sides and subtract 3 from both sides, we get x squared minus 4 equals 0. Okay. And how would you factor x squared minus 4? Factor it as x plus 2 times x minus 2. It's a difference of squares. And so either x equals negative 2 or x equals positive 2. Are we finished, Buchanan? Why are we not finished? Because we're looking for the point or points of intersection. Now the fact that we have two x values here tells us that we're going to have two y values that go along with them, two points of intersection. All right. Uh, the easiest place to plug these two values in would be to plug them into the linear equation. So if you plug, if you take your x equals negative 2 solution and you plug it in right there, you would get negative 10 plus 3, which is mm -hmm. negative, seven. negative 7. So negative 2 goes with negative 7. If you plug positive 2 in there, you get 5 times 2, which is 10, and 10 plus 3 is 13. So there's two solutions there algebraically. Now, is this more difficult than solving with a graphing calculator? It's a little more difficult, but is it, is it slower? It's really not slower, is it? You don't save yourself a lot of time by using the graphing calculator. And I'm lear I've learned from experience as a teacher, guys, that there's a high likelihood of pressing the wrong button when you're putting these equations in and getting them the wrong solution. So you've got to be careful, particularly when you're using graphing calculator. <coughs> Similarly, we have y equals x squared plus 7x plus 3 and y equals 2x minus 3. Again, if we solve by substitution, what we're, what we're really looking for is where these two things are the same. Where is x squared plus 7x plus 3 equal to 2x minus 3? Is x squared plus 7x plus 3 ever equal to 2x minus 3? Those are, you know, you have to keep in mind that there could be a possibility of having no solutions. And that's going to end up giving us uh, imaginary answers, right? If imaginary numbers show up or it's not factorable and you get a square root of a negative number when you're using a quadratic formula, that's a problem. So we're going to put this into standard form, which means I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and add 3 to both sides, and that's going to give me y x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And that will indeed factor as what? X plus, 2 times x. x plus 2 times x plus 3. And that's going to have two solutions. And those two solutions are negative 2 or negative 3, negative three right? Yes? Is everybody good with that? Can I, am I, I know I'm going a little fast, but this, this part of it's kind of all review. We've done it before. All right, we just finished testing on this. 
and I hope you did well. I haven't graded them yet. If we plug these values in and we have to to find the y that corresponds with negative 2, if I put negative 2 in for x there, I get 2 times negative 2 minus 3. That's negative 4 minus 3, which is negative 7. So negative 7 goes with the negative 2. If I plug negative 3 in there, I get 2 times negative 3 minus 3. That's negative 3 and negative 9. So those are my two points of intersection for this system of equations. Yeah. Okay. All right. Last example. Shh. Y'all listen. A ski patrol fires an explosive arrow to trigger a control avalanche. Controlled avalanche. The path the arrow is modeled by the equation y equals negative x squared over 1600 plus 2x. And the shape of the mountainside is modeled by y equals 3 fourths x, where x is horizontal distance and y is the vertical distance. At what altitude will the arrow strike the mountain? Assume that all dimensions are in feet. How would you solve this? We're looking for the intersection point, right? So one thing that's kind of tricky on this one, and uh, probably graphically would be the way to do this, is making sure the window is correct. That's an interesting flight path, by the way. I don't see gravity in, at play there. This arrow would have to have some type of acceleration of its own. It would have to be powered in order for this equation to work. All right, so what do you get when you graph this in a standard viewing window? Can you see anything? Well, that's because that's where the arrow leaves the ground, right? So the slope, the slope is, uh, looks something like this. Right? The y equals 3 fourths x, that's the slope. That's just a, that's just, that's the mountainside. So the arrow is going to be fired from the bottom and it's going to come up here and attack somewhere up here. So we've got to find that point up there. What you can see at the beginning, that's zero, zero. Because the arrow is fired from the bottom of the slope, how high up the slope is it going to hit? So we need to zoom out uh, until we can see something different, right? So uh, I would just go into your... Um, your window key and just change your uh, your y maximum to something bigger change it to a hundred keep zooming out until you have to go has anybody found the number that will work I think it's, bigger than 100. it's much bigger than 100 okay 2000 something so change it to 3000 and see what you get See if you can see the second intersection if your y max is changed to 3,000. Everybody use uh, an x max of 3,000 and a y max of 3,000. Okay, so if you use an x max of 3,000 and a y max of 3,000, you can see the uh, doing. Some of your graphing calculators will be slow because they're actually going through a lot of points to plot from 0 to 3,000, right? So it's actually plotting one point at a time to get these functions. So then you can use the intersection function, right? Let's use second trace and find that upper intersection. That's a heck of an arrow shot, you know. You shot that arrow 3,000 feet. That's half a mile. So what's the point of intersection? X equals what? 2,000 and 1,500. Even numbers? So the question says, 
what altitude will the hike strike the uh, will the uh, arrow strike the mountain? Which one of these is the height at that point? The y value. So the answer is fifteen hundred feet. Okay. So you have to do some playing around there until you can find to actually see the intersection point. So they shot an arrow, an explosive arrow, up a mountain to trigger an avalanche to go down the mountain towards the mountain. I don't know. Thirteen year old boys might do something like that. All right, so your homework, guys, is page seven sixty five, D through G, one through six, eleven through fifteen, seventeen, and nineteen through twenty three. There's uh, two or three lessons that we'll skip in this unit, so you guys could expect a test on unit 12, the final unit of the textbook, uh, sometime toward the end of next week. And then that leaves us with a week to uh, review for the exam. We're only like 60 